Baby, have you ever wondered, wondered what the heck is wrong with me? I seem to overheat within ten minutes, ten minutes of driving. I'm your Subaru and I'm overheating. Yeah. Have you ever wondered what makes your Subaru overheat after 10 minutes of driving pretty consistently? Uh, it could be a number of things, but ultimately it boils down to, haha, <laughs> pun intended, you'll see in a minute. It boils down to the thermostat not opening. You can tell your thermostat's not opening if it gets hot on the radiator hose up here, but then it's icy cold down on your bottom hose. Well, let me show you what I mean. This is your water pump, and it's also your thermostat housing. You can see the impeller in there. This one's a little rusty. At the very far end, it's kind of crusty and uh, brown looking. But anyway, this is where you find your thermostat. And your thermostat is uh, basically the spring of it mounts up into the, toward the engine, no matter what your car is. Uh, but this lower hose is the one that I'm talking about. You'll grab that with your hand and it'll feel cold. Now, it could just be a bad thermostat. Or it could be that your air isn't completely bled out of the system and sometimes air can't get bled out of the system because the head gaskets blown and combustion gases will get into uh, the cooling system and they'll collect. You know, if you lose the head gasket on the driver's side, which is typically what happens, it's usually the driver's side head gasket that fails for whatever reason. It probably has to do with the orientation of the radiator fans, I don't know, heat cycles. But uh, when the head gasket fails, it emits uh, these compression gases and they collect on the spring of the thermostat. Like I say, the spring goes in toward the engine. And with those compression gases there, it doesn't do the same as the liquid uh, does against the thermostat. So let me show you how you test a thermostat. I showed you where it goes and how to pull it out. Let's go test it. So this is a thermostat. Now this is a two part, or uh, two different kinds of metal that are basically put together to make this spring. The top and the bottom are uh, different metals, but they're cast together. So anyway, when the temperature changes on the thermostat here, it can cause this to contract or expand. It's expanded, and as you can see, it's in the closed position. Uh, it's further lesson of anatomy, this is just to help uh, get the air out of the system. So when you install it, it's installed like this. Um, if there's air, it's supposed to be able to pass through and you know, just kind of dribble out. Subarus are incredibly hard to get the air out of the system sometimes, especially on the uh, 2001 and newer models. So the way to test this is to stick it into boiling water. Bo water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this thermostat is supposed to open at about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is well above what this is uh, requiring to open. If it won't open when it's submerged in boiling water, then you know that the thermostat's bad. So you take the thermostat, put it in boiling water, and then you just watch and see if it opens. If it opens, you know that it's good. If it won't open, you know it's bad. I usually like to boil a new one on a Subaru if there's a suspect head gasket failure. You know, if I've already tried to bleed the system several times or uh, whatever the case may be. Like with this one, it shows us some signs of being old. You can see some corrosion and whatever, but it's opening. It was open when I pulled it out. Sometimes it'll get stuck open and get stuck closed. So it's a good idea to test it. But like I say, if I'm about to do a head gasket, like with this Subaru out there, I can tell you that there's no antifreeze in the oil. I pulled out the drain pan and I checked to see if antifreeze came out first. Antifreeze is heavier than oil, so it goes to the bottom. I don't know if you knew that. But you pull the drain plug, see if there's any antifreeze in there, see if there's oil in the antifreeze. Um, you'll usually find it in the, you know, against the radiator cap, um, or you'll find it in the overflow tank. 
Uh, another way to check to see if your uh, head gasket has failed is when you first start it up or when you think that the head gasket is emitting uh, compression gases into the radiator. You can start it up and see if it geysers. You know, sometimes they'll do that even though they're not hot yet. That's on one that's really bad. Sometimes they'll only go bad when they get fully hot. The head will warp a little bit, you know, just slightly enough to let compression gases into the water jacket. But let's see how our thermostat's doing, shall we? You can see that that's open. You can see that water would be flowing through that. So in this case, the thermostat is opening, but like I say, if air collects around that because of a bad head gasket emitting compression gases into the water jacket, you know, that can cause the problem. I want to see if it'll close. If the thermostat's stuck open, it just won't ever get hot. Your heater won't get hot because it just constantly is cooling going through the radiator. So looks like this thermostat is good. So we either have, uh, most people are cooking a turkey on Thanksgiving. I'm making a video on boiling thermostats. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, get with the family here in a little bit, but I've done a lot of these tests. I think I even have this on another video, but this is how you test them. So this is the best way, because you can buy a brand new one. I've, I've bought brand new ones and had them be bad and you don't want to invest a ton of work in putting a new head gasket in something you know if that's what you're you know getting toward if you are you know putting in a bad thermostat from the factory so anyway i hope this video is helpful um another symptom of a head gasket failure that i didn't mention is white smoke out the tailpipe when it's when a vehicle is completely warmed up if the vehicle is not warmed up properly or it's cold outside of course you can get white smoke but if you're getting a ton of white smoke or it goes on consistently for a long time then uh you know that's a sign of a head gasket failure another sign of a head gasket failure is leaking out the side of the block uh, where the engine block and the cylinder head meet at the gasket um, another symptom is that it's running crappy. Another symptom is a deposit. You know how this has, you know, kind of a white deposit on it? If you have something that's kind of whitish green on your spark plugs, that's another sign of the head gasket failure. So, uh, if you have one spark plug that's just ridiculously clean, um, that's another sign of the head gasket failure. Over time, it'll turn kind of a whitish green, but at first they just get really clean. So, well, I think that's all of them. If you can think of any others that I miss, leave them in the comments, and I'll put up an annotation. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> this Subaru's been driving me crazy. I've been trying to get the system bled. I'm pretty sure that the head gasket's bad, but I want to be absolutely sure. So that's what this is all I about. I have to tell you why we have a thermostat. The reason why we have a thermostat is that we want to regulate the temperature of the engine to be about 190 or 180, you know, between 180 and 195. So this is a way that we accomplish that. We could have an electronic device and a temperature sensor and computer controlled, but this is so effective and simple and reliable for the most part that uh, it's just a beautiful way to accomplish that. The reason why we want the engine to run at that temperature is it helps with the uh, atomization of fuel. If your car's warmed up, your intake manifold uh, becomes, you know, some kind of a preheater. Your cylinder head, you know, the cylinders, everything. It just runs better and cleaner, you know, if it's at that operating temperature. Uh, if you have the car too cold, it won't run very efficient. You'll have a lot of, uh, you know, excess emissions, hydrocarbons and whatnot. And uh, so basically, if you you know what happens if you run it too hot, you can't get too hot or else you'll you know, ruin a head gasket, you'll have other problems. So that's why we use a thermostat and that's uh, what it's for. There have been companies that tried to do an electronic one and in order to do it successfully with all those temperature cycles and stuff, you know, it just, it doesn't work very well. You know, this has been uh, tested and proven. It'll be interesting, you know, we're past peak oil and they say that there's, you know, and there's debate about this, they say that we're to the point now where we've used more oil than what there is. You know, we're past the halfway point and we're on the downhill and we're really consuming a lot of oil now. So we'll have to move to some alternative type of energy source for our transportation. Now, the interesting thing about that is um, there's a lot of technology and a lot of research and a lot of really smart guys that went into 
being able to turn you know crude oil into gasoline and then using that gasoline for transportation and using the byproducts of it and oil went from something that was a curse and a plague if you found oil on your land back in the day that was the worst thing in the world because what a mess I mean you can't graze your cattle on it as cattle get stuck in it they drown in it stains your clothes I mean it's just awful you know it was a really bad thing but then once it became uh, useful uh, thanks to the DuPonts and the Rockefellers really you know making this stuff happen uh, now it's like black gold you know like so much of what we have and know and do and use involves oil whether it's making plastic you know or whether it's creating fuel you know we used to use uh, cannabis to make plastic and we used to use that to make ethanol now we're using corn for ethanol and now that we're going back over that way but uh, it's pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see what advancements are allowed to happen and patents don't get bought up in terms of batteries and stuff in the future. We've got some pretty cool stuff ahead of us. I'm not scared. <laughs> A lot of the answers are already out there. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, look into some of the... Well, I don't know if I'll go into that on this video. I think I'll just leave it at that. So thermostat's a pretty cool invention.